Love and Watches is a podcast for male and female watch lovers alike. Perpetual Girl and Ranch Racer are a watch crazy wife and husband team, bringing you the latest in news, gossip, controversy, and anything else that matters in the world of watches. We hope you enjoy the show. Hey, watch fam, Ranch Racer here. This is Perpetual Girl. And yes, we are coming to you a week later. Amazing. Yay. We're uh, we're finally getting back on schedule. This is episode 27 of the Love and Watches podcast. Uh, some exciting stuff this week. We're going to talk about quartz watches, actually, yeah. and kind of our, our favorites in that genre. And we came to this conclusion one day before the infamous Timex. Now infamous. Q. Q Timex. Q, Q Timex. Is Q Timex. Called. Yeah. The day before that came out, it was either a day or the night before or two days before. Yeah, we're like, let's do a quartz We episode. were talking about quartz watches, and I don't know how we got on the topic, and I go, I know, let's do a show on, we'll do a podcast on all quartz watches. Yep. That was before that, so I didn't want anyone to think that we're jumping on the quartz bandwagon this week because of all the quartz stuff. But it is, it's good timing. It is. Um, and Just we happens will, to be. Yeah, we'll talk about the... A little bit about the Q Time Max. I don't want to go into too much. If you guys are two Rook Watch Knobs listeners, you got to hear a lot about that from those guys this week. Oh, they talk. Um, oh, that's right. Yeah. Um, so why don't we let's do a quick wrist, wrist check, and then maybe we'll just talk a little bit about the week's uh, events, and then get right into it. So I'll go first with my wrist check. Um, fitting for the show today, I'm wearing my Casio World Timer, which is a super super popular watch. Uh, and it has been for at least a couple of years on, on Instagram. Uh, and I think it's, it's just cause it's, it's super cool. It's kind of the retro, you know, eighties look with the, uh, with the digital analog dial on the upper left. And then you've Very got popular and you got the world map and really, it's really a, a fun watch. It's um, actually a really sharp looking watch too. The one you have with the stainless case and the black bezel. Yeah. And then it comes with a, a obviously very cheap uh, stainless bracelet adjustable right? but i put on what brand i don't even know what brand this is do you remember where i got this it's barton is it a barton yeah you're right it's, it's a barton, barton gingerbread color like a suede almost mm-hmm. um and i i dig it on this it's super comfortable and you don't get the jangly you know yeah jangly, jangly and then i can bracelet. wear it too you can wear it so i don't have to resize it and it's just a lot of fun uh, sorry folks my allergies are out of control today so that is my watch for today i just thought it okay. was it was fitting what do you got going funny you should say that i'm wearing a casio as well and it's one of five of these little very inexpensive women's digital countdown timer and it's a, a rather small watch but this one's kind of different because it's gold tone gold tone mm-hmm. and the face is turquoise which is one of my favorite colors but it's got this wonderful countdown timer that you just press one, three, five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Mine does 25. that too. Do you have a countdown? Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> you can tell today is a quartz. Is it? It's a digital quartz episode. <laughs> That's a, it. Actually, starts at one minute, like these. I can I can set the countdown timer so it can. You go, have to tell it first. Yeah, I, okay. I can set it at three minutes or five. So minutes. this one is a quick, quick access, very fast to set. One press for one minute, another oh, press cool. for three minutes, really cool. another press for five. So when you're m- poaching eggs or turning on a garden hose somewhere and you don't want to forget, it's super easy. I use it in the kitchen all the time. So you don't have to go into like settings. And, you don't have to do anything. Yeah, and I don't, cool. I don't know why they don't put these on, on like the G-Shocks and everything. A lot of the all, G-Shocks have countdown timers. Not the ones that you, you, the ones they have that you have, you have to set them previous to right. set to turning yeah, it on. That's true. This is literally click, 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 click. You can just pick. So you click it three times and you got five minutes. So it's cool. very, very easy. So I just set it to one minute so you all get to hear it. I like that. It's a fun little yeah. fun little uh, gold-plated turquoise watch. There it is. There you go. The, the sound s- of Casio. The sound of the <laughs> 80s right there. That's the sound of the hey, 80s. I went to high school in the 80s. so I know. So did I. And that's what we were used to. That's what we wore. Right? So that watch, and I'll tell you a little more about it. That one is the women's L A six seven zero W G A dash two 
gold stainless steel quartz watch with digital dial. And you've posted that a lot on the Instagram account. Plastic crystal. Plastic. Plastic. And then a stainless steel case, stainless steel band, water resistant to 100 meters. And I had one of these in the 80s, an actual, the real deal might have been late 80s or early 90s. And I used to shower in it every day. So it's actually, they're, oh, they have a purple one now. <gasps> so I'm looking on Amazon. They have all kinds of fun lots colors. Lots of them. Yeah. This is fantastic. Okay. So. Cool. Well, should okay, we. Okay. So that's, that's what I'm wearing. Should we talk a little bit about little, some of the stuff going on this week? It, I'll tell you, I've been, <laughs> I've been feisty on Instagram. It's just, I don't know if I've had something. I don't know. Your inner just, instigator is coming out. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I've been entertaining myself, but I've probably been ticking off some people. I don't know. But uh, but I have fun with it. And, you know, part of it is just I'm so I'm hashtagged out. I, I'm just hashtagged out, you know, and it's a subculture. And I'm I'm not sure if I'm it's so crazy. It's like too old for that. <laughs> okay, number one, it used to be called the pound sign, but now it it's is. a hashtag. It's a pound but sign. There, it's like number sign. People hashtag anything and then try to get people to use it. And it's like, it's like trying to become famous on Instagram. Right. And there was, well, in some, to a degree, it's fun. Like if you want to do, it, it is like, I love doing my Seiko Catter day and right. then you can, it's a way to organize all the photos in one place. So it's kind of like yep. a filing system, but some of the stuff gets a little, well, there's one that's been, I think it's relatively recent. It's been around for a bit, but recently people have really been doing it. It's called half watch Tuesday. And I, I just didn't get it. Like, I don't really understand the significance of showing half of a watch dial on Tuesday. Other than other than someone first did it on a Tuesday and they said, okay, I'm going to call. So it, I like, I try to, I kind of dig hashtags that mean something, but for me, that one didn't mean anything. So I totally played on it. And I think Wednesday I did, I did three quarter watch Wednesday. And then, Today I did eighth watch. I did quarter today. <laughs> today I did eighth was watch. It today? Was um, it this morning? I don't even remember what I had for breakfast. Yeah, today I did eighth watch Thursday. And I was going to do no watch Friday tomorrow, but now I've got, you know, some of my buddies and stuff on Instagram are like, okay, now you got to keep it up. Now you got to have to go to 16th and then 32nd <laughs> and 64th. So I don't know. I mean, I'm not a very good artist. I'm going to have to zoom in and see what I can do and see how long I can keep it up. But that was kind of just my me having fun and. And kind of ragging on another hashtag that I thought was a little bit silly. But a lot of people like it, whatever. I I guess it's been around a while. I've never seen it. And then I remember a lot of people would show the watch coming out of your sleeve, half of it. And maybe that's where it came from. Or I thought that was the peekaboo. Yeah, I've seen that called hashtag peekaboo. But I don't know. It it gets a little bit silly and crazy and out of hand. I'm sure a lot of people love it. But it's it's almost like everyone's looking for their, their minute of fame on social media, you know, but isn't that the goal of social media? Everyone wants to be loved I th- I think more than, goal, well, more goal than the other social guy media was to connect people. But a lot of people have used it uh, for com- obviously for commercial purposes and even more so now to get rich and Hey, whatever more, more power to you. I don't think my eighth watch Thursday is going to get me rich. <laughs> Maybe if I can get to like 128th to the third power. Be? Yeah, I mean, it's. I guess it'll just depend on how far I can take it. So, uh, so anyway, that was. I got a little feisty with that, and then. All right, let's let's quickly talk about the Q Timex. Um, as you know, I've worn Timexes up for a long time. When I was young, I have a Snoopy Timex. I have two of these retro that I bought last year. One's pink, one's orange, and it's got the same band as the Q Timex almost. So it's not like they haven't been making watches before. Timex is a super cool brand. I yeah. think it's the only, it's the last standing original American brand. You've got like RGM, which is a newer, younger, you know, high end mechanical watch brand, but Timex is like the the last standing American watch brand. Oh, and ha- I think Hamilton. they're still no Hamilton Swiss now. No, I meant. And both like of us owned American, by Citizen. Correct. Timex is still oh, I see what you mean. an Officially, American company, I believe. Yeah. So we love the brand. We always have. And they've, you know, the last couple of years, they've been kind of making a comeback and getting back into the eye of the collector. And and so they earlier this week or late last week, they released this watch called the Q Timex, which is 
a reissue of a 1979 quartz watch that is just a basic three hand watch that mimicked the Pepsi bezel on the Rolex GMT Master. So this is a direct replica. Not direct because it's not a GMT. It's just made to look like it. And it's got kind of this cool weave weave bracelet, but it was made to look like the GMT. So this new reissue is an exact reissue of that 1979 Timex. So if you put them next to each other, they'd look the same. I guess. I've never, I haven't seen an original, but supposedly that's that's the deal. I don't know if it's exact or not. You know, it's a cool watch. And 179 bucks for a quartz, cool looking quartz watch. Hey, I'm all over it. But what set me off was, uh, and it was funny because I think it was this this week where Mike and Cass had mentioned, you know, we're probably going to, one of these is going to pop up on eBay for 500 bucks. Of course. And on Tuesday I went searching and sure enough, first hit comes up $495. Taking advantage of people's emotion and scalping it. It's basically scalping. Well, and the thing is, it's not even a limited edition people. I mean, this thing's going to be in retailers. They released it first on Timex.com. Like it's Walmart? going to be in retailers. Not all retailers, but it will be in select retailers, it says. So it's not like... Target, Walmart. It's um, not a limited. I mean, you're crazy if you pay 500 bucks on eBay. You know, don't give this Joker... Don't give this Joker flipper dude that that kind of money. It's just it's crazy. It's called scalping. Yeah, it's watch scalping. You know, and it's and just, some some uh, authorized dealers will blacklist you for doing that but it's all social media driven right it's it's hype and people go oh i've got to have it i got to have it now and i don't want to get into too much detail around social media purchasing because if you want to get into more detail listen to mike and kaz over at two broke watch snubs because their monday show is dedicated that's the topic is around our behaviors around how we buy things based on social media triggers so i don't but I really wanted to just at least mention the Q Timex and tell you guys, don't panic. There's going to be more of them. They're going to be in retailers. They'll be back on Timex.com. In a year, you'll probably be able to pick up pick them up on Amazon for 150 bucks. Mm -hmm. So don't freak out. What about my Snoopy Timex? Because that happened as well, that you bought me. You got it right away. Did you pay $200 for it? And I saw someone was scalping it on, on I paid whatever re for... Yeah, because I saw it. I'm like, oh, like that. You bought that for me, and then we saw it being scalped on eBay for... Oh, I want to say over four or five hundred dollars as well. Yeah, and that one I don't know if it was a limited or not. I'm not sure. I do not think it was, and they said that there would be more coming. So, yeah, because I don't think it says limited edition on their website, but I don't know why it's taking so long. Because I guess there's people out there still trying to get them, and you can't get them new from Timex. So, so are, I don't know. What so is Timex is. is that a trend that watches watch companies are starting to kind of do what Rolex is doing well, and limit it, their production and if it is and that's re one reason I've lost a lot of love for Seiko these days you know I haven't With bought a Seiko I haven't bought a Seiko in quite a while and I don't have any on the radar and you bought my SKX 007 oh uh, that's true because I modded it so I did buy the 007 um, but yeah I, I've definitely lost love for Seiko and if other companies like Timex that are supposed to be the affordable watch company if they start doing this and releasing these limiteds and preying on people on social media, they're going to lose me as a customer too. So it's, I think it's, I know it's the way of the world and it's the way of social media, but I kind of, I feel like it's unethical. Yeah. I don't know. It's social media. It's social media driven. And that's all that's, that's the last I'll say on the topic. Well, and there's one, there's one thing to say about making great product and producing it and making profit but make profit by selling a lot of them. Don't make profit by trying to create artificial excitement well, and that's the thing. overpricing it's, and paying more than you should. That's I think that's wrong. And it's not like it's expensive to produce. It's made in a factory somewhere in China. So it's not super expensive to produce. It doesn't make sense that they release these things in these tiny batches. You know, you know it's going to be popular. Get it out there and let people have your product. People that want your product, let them buy your product. Don't come out with these right. ridiculous and limited sell a ton of them. initial releases. And then someday someone's kid is going to be like, yeah, my dad had this great watch back in the in 20 whatever and look how great it looks. And then maybe they can release another one. I mean, how many, how many world times are there out there? Everyone's got them and they're fantastic. Yep. So you create loyalty and excitement by letting and, people buy your stuff. And they sell like crazy. You know, and this would be selling like crazy if they just released it and had a bunch of them and just allowed people to continue to order them. 
but the way they do it with these with they, these tease campaigns and I, I hate that. You know, I have a marketing degree and I never went into the business. I got the degree because I was trying to, you know, break in as a professional race car driver and finding sponsorship, you needed to understand marketing, but I hate marketing. It, it's all it's just we called Ugh. you guys the there's M of, people. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of dishonesty there. And yeah, I don't like that. I, it just, That's I why I majored in like art. <laughs> playing on people's emotions and all that. All that oh. jazz. But, well, and the funny thing is the Q Timex is one of the watches I had at initially put on my list for this show. When it first came out, I'm like, that is really cool. I'm going to put it on my list. I'm probably going to buy it. And it sold out that same day after I'd seen it. And then we see the one for 500 on eBay and it got yanked off my list for this show i saw people begging people to g give more money to get it. it it's ridiculous i mean it's this weird panic thing especially for a watch that's going to be released in retailers are you kidding me you really well, have to be one of the first to have it it's and, ridiculous. and this isn't even a limited edition but were you telling me a story from watch time or one of the watch magazines about how many limited edition watches are sold and they're not sold to people that want to wear them they're sold Everyone wants to flip them. Yeah, well, and scalp them. That's the thing. If a retailer builds up all this hype and and says, "Okay, it's going to be released on this date. You can buy it starting at this time." If they do that, you are automatically attracting the all of the scalpers. Right? I don't even like to call them flippers anymore. They are pure and simple. They're scalpers, and you attract all the scalpers that want to grab one up and then take advantage of someone that really wanted it to wear it. Excuse me. You know, and and own it and. That's why I don't like the strategy, and hopefully it'll change, but maybe not. It seems well, like that's the direction everything's going. Selling a watch for a little bit over what you may have paid for it, it's there's different situations. There could be a classic watch. It's not made anymore. It's rare. It may gain value over time, like a rare Rolex or... Like we were looking at that Submariner red dial today. That, that, yes. We had that topic going at w lunch. Which is, and, I'm going to cover as well, yeah. So... That's one thing, but when you're getting something that's worth a hundred bucks and you're turning around and selling it for five hundred, that's not ethical. I agree. So, I agree. Okay, enough on the enough on the, the mini Q, butts, the Q Timex, <laughs> and the scalpers. What do you think about the the new fiftieth anniversary Omega Speedmaster? I personally am not thrilled with it. It's been an interesting one, hasn't it? Well, I'm not sure why. Well, the dial, I mean, yes, it's a Speedmaster dial, but I don't like the flat gray. I think it's kind of dull. Mm -hmm. And I don't like they did like they did that rear view of, you know, someone's butt. I don't think Omega was expecting the the reception that it has received in the community. It's been overall a pretty not? negative reception. They're showing a back end view of somebody. There's so many shots of of the astronauts coming down the ladders and on the side views. Why did they not do that? Or or standing on the... And this is of Buzz Aldrin. So Armstrong was already standing on the moon. So they could have done a shot with the American flag or they could have done all kinds of stuff, mm -hmm. right? And it's, they pick one of his backside. And not only is it his backside, he's bent over. So, I mean, it's just not a is flattering it, shot. Is it a photo And this is that, at the, on the nine o'clock subdial. Did... Did uh, Neil Armstrong actually take that photo from the moon when he was standing there of Buzz Aldrin he, he coming down the stairs? Because it's from a distance, so he must have taken. So it. that could be the significance of that is showing. Well, maybe, but it's still not a very flattering photo. I'm sure there was other photos they could have used that would have signified the 50th anniversary just the same. Well, and people don't remember the first, the second person on the moon. They remember the first, just like when you race a car, mm -hmm. you either win or you're the first loser. But you know why they did that? Because Armstrong left his Speedmaster in the capsule because it was, I think it was broken. So <gasps> he actually left it in, in uh, the lunar lander and either didn't have a watch or had a different watch on. Oh, I don't, the, I don't remember. I don't know the whole story. The watch that is no, now that, called something no, pilot. No, that was, that was a different um, mission, different mission, different, different guy. But so, yeah, it was. Not the best choice of images. You think they could could have come up with something better? The colors aren't bad. I mean, the flat gray, eh, it's it's just eh. It's very masculine. Uh, the gold accents are nice. I don't have any issues I, with I the gold accents. I do like accents. that. I think that's nice. That's one thing I do really like about it. And it's got a movement that I approve of. Like I, I said a lot of stuff about the three twenty one because I, I was that the uh, the vintage movement that they were going to yeah remake? that they reissued in the gold in the 
not in the gold one. They reissued it in something. I forget what it was, but it literally is a duplicate of the original 321 movement, which was the first movement in the Speedmaster. This has the same movement that was in the the gold Speedmaster 50th anniversary with mm-hmm. like the burgundy yeah. uh, bezel that they released at Basel or bef- right. It was either right after or right before Basel. Now that one was like a $20,000 watch, but the movement is a, is an updated 1861. So in my Sapphire sandwich, which is the basic Speedmaster, but with a Sapphire crystal and a Sapphire case back, that's, basically the original 1861 movement but they call it the 1863 because it's got some embellishments and some fancy stuff because you get to see it through the case back well this new movement is called the 3861 and i approve and it's significant because it's modernizing that original movement so it's got um the coax escapement which is super cool and it's chronometer certified so it's very accurate like my like my orbis yeah, like my Speedmaster my... is like 12 seconds a day. It's not an accurate yeah. watch. This one is accurate. It's got a modern movement updated from the 1861. So I think that's really cool. But yeah, it's this thing has been nicknamed a lot of stuff I can't repeat on air because oh. we're a family show. But I do like Kaz's nickname for it. I think he's the first one that said it, which was the full moon. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, isn't that perfect? It's the full moon. Right? You're getting it right there. It's the full moon. <laughs> I have I have videos of my animals I've called out before, too. Oh, gosh. Um, I actually have to say I like the, the gold and burgundy one better than this. Do you? I do. And I have, I have a funny thing I was thinking about when you talk about the sapphire sandwich. Like, if I eat a cheese sandwich, it's a cheese sandwich. If I eat a ham sandwich, which I don't eat pork because I'm allergic to it. Okay, let me think of something better. Okay, an avocado sandwich or... Mm-hmm. Um, veggie sandwich. A veggie sandwich. Mm-hmm. Sandwiches are what are inside the sandwich. Why do you call it a sapphire sandwich? Because the sapphire on the outside of your watch is the bread. So you won't say, I eat a bread sandwich. That's that would imply point. putting a piece of bread inside two pieces that's of bread. That's a good point. I never got into that kind of depth of thinking about the nickname, but and that's I guess you have a I'm point. I'm a left brainer. Yeah. <laughs> But needless Very to say, random. that's what it was called originally, the Sapphire Everyone's Sandwich. Everyone's like, so that's the nickname. Coo, coo, coo. Yeah. That's, so, I might no, have just lost a bunch of listeners. Yeah. <laughs> the, I will say I'm the sober. gold one. I'm sober. The gold one's not bad. It's way too expensive. I think it's but, really pretty, but it just doesn't say Speedmaster to me. I think it's a yeah, pretty watch. And it's kind of a lighter gold. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's yellow. Yeah. And they, what are they? It's I'm pretty. to look for it. They call it moonshine so it's this gold blingy. alloy that yeah. they've that omega's developed they call it moonshine so it's it's bordering on it's very light sorry that's it's pretty noise. yeah we're, we're right? looking at it so that's it if you look at the original gold one that came out i don't know in the 80s or 90s and then you compare it to the new one so it's much it, lighter yeah it's a it's got more white in it it's pretty so i think it's a nice watch it's growing on me and everyone was waiting for the stainless and so this is what we got this this uh full, no st- the full moon we got the full oh, moon oh well that there's such different watches why did they not just make that in a stainless with the burgundy great question i mean, like i said i kind of like like the gold on the black i think it's pretty i do too and yeah, i, I like, like that um i don't like the gray in there with it i like that they have the numeral 11 above the 11 o'clock index right to signify apollo 11 so that's pretty mm-hmm. cool so I mean, it's got a lot of nice touches. I think they just kind of, they, they kinda screwed up on, on the, the image. Yeah. They, they blew it on the image, right? And that, they're famous for doing these special images on the I know, 9 o'clock I know. sub Like the footprints and the... The footprints and the Apollo, picture of Apollo's head and that kind of stuff. But So anyway, I guess that's our thoughts on the... Are we done with our rant? On the Omega. <laughs> Are we? Yeah, we're done ranting. What, I think. what else is new? Have we seen anything That's the else? main stuff. That's that's really what I wanted to talk about before I got into our our main topic. Okay. You want to go first because you have more watches. I have a lot of watches about. here, and I I have um so, so I have five quartz watches here on the table, and they're not all the same. And we are talking about our favorite quartz watches. The way you've gone is you've chosen all watches that are in your collection, mm-hmm. and I've kind of gone a mix of. Watches that I own, watches that I might like to own, and then also different price ranges. So with that, I'm going to let you go first. Okay. 
I'm going to bring up my paperwork here. So not all watches are created equal when it comes to quartzes. And I tried to pick a little variety. So my first one is a basic quartz watch, modern, and it's the, uh, it's a dress watch and it's a bull of a women's Swarovski, Swarovski crystal pave bracelet. Um, it's actually a really pretty watch and it reminds me a lot of some of the all diamond Cartier watches that cost what hundreds, hundred thousand dollars at least. Um, but this is a, I think so here Amazon has it for about $259. And, uh, the number here is nine, six L two, four, four. And it's a really pretty dress watch. So this is very thin. It's got the curve, kind of a curve to the crystal It came out a couple years ago, I think, or three years ago, but it's actually a really lovely, uh, new year's Eve or dress up watch or if you like to go on cruises or things like that. And it's got the blued hands. So it reminds me a lot of the old 1940s and Art Deco Bulovas that uh, they made that I actually have an, an old Art Deco as well. So I kind of love this mm-hmm. style of retro look. So that's my first one. Any other, uh, let's see, 22 millimeters. Um, analog quartz movement, it says. I don't know. It's that's, a great yeah. movement. So it's it's an a great watch quartz. if you're yeah. you know, going to get in a... It's a two hand evening gown yep. or a, yep. a sexy little cocktail dress. And it's the and little it's black great. dress watch. Yeah, totally. Or, you know, pants yep. suit, jumpsuit, who knows, but it's, yep. it's super cute. And with yep. the blued hands, it has that retro look. I mean, this thing is just blinged, blinged out. Yeah, totally. It's very cute. So analog quartz people. Cool. All right. My turn. Yep. Okay. My first pick is actually a watch I don't own. I've tried it on before, almost bought it in our on our last trip to Las Vegas. Um, so this watch is based on a watch that was released in 1984 by Longines called the VHP, which stood for very high precision. And it was exactly what it said it was, a high precision, precision quartz. I think it was accurate to plus or minus 10 seconds a year. And they re-released it, re-released it last year. Originally in just a three-hander, but now they've got they've got a three-hander. They've got chronographs. They've got a GMT uh, in 41, 42, and I think 44 millimeter sizes. We only saw one. We looked at the three-hand, basic three-hander white dial. I thought it was a perpetual calendar. Well, it is because it's quartz. Yeah, but so I it thought is it a had perpetual a perpetual And it's got some really neat functions, yes. how the hands move and stuff. It keeps um, time if even if you... Un, undo the crown. Mm-hmm. Yep. You push it in and it remembers and it goes back to what the real time is yep. or forward. It'll yeah. Go forward. So it saves battery life by, by stopping the hands, but it's still keeping time. So when you push the crown back in, it automatically sets itself, which is pretty cool. Now I believe there's a similar citizen that came out recently that we had a little bit of a rant about, well, but it was yeah, $7,000 or whatever yeah. the caliber zero one, which is accurate to plus or minus one second a year. Uh, but yeah, they re- released it in some precious metal watches that were a little bit silly, like twelve grand or something. What's the Grand Seiko you have accuracy? Uh, five seconds a month. Okay. Yeah, this is five seconds a year. The original okay. was ten seconds, so this is super super accurate. They have white dials, blue dials, black dials, stainless steel cases, black PVD cases. I mean, tons and tons of options. And I think it starts. I'm looking at their okay. So it starts around I it was a thousand. About a thousand I remember starts at exactly a thousand for like the 41 millimeter white dial three hander, and that's the one we looked at. Yeah, and it goes up to a couple thousand. If you want like a black PVD case chronograph, you're looking at 1950, so almost two grand. So for a lot of people, that's going to be out of the question for a quartz. But I kind of dig it because it's not just your standard quartz. I mean. Mm-mm. When you feel it, it feel, it's it's got weight to it. It's very high quality, very well very made. Very traditional watch. Longine design. Yeah, it's really pretty. Very high quality. Looks. I looked at it under a loop. I mean, the details are really good, and the accuracy is awesome, and some of the functionality is kind of cool. So, so that's that's my first. What's your second? Okay, my next one 
is the Dan Henry Gran Turismo, which is a mecha quartz and still a quartz, but it's got the chronograph that's, um, and you actually explained this really well. So why don't you go ahead and explain the, the, just what the mecha quartz chronograph is. Well, so it's a basic quartz powered watch, but it has a mechanical chronograph movement module on top. So when you start the, like if you start the chronograph, Mm -hmm. does it, it looks more like kind of a ticking acts more like a mechanical watch, right? Mm-hmm. Cause it's gear driven off of the battery. And then when you reset it, it bounces it back, back like a mechanical. Right. It doesn't go around instead of going all the way around. So that's mm-hmm. this one. And this is, um, we have, uh, two people in our red bar group who both have this watch. And I think they have, one has the reverse Panda and the other person has the all silver and I have the Panda. It's a very popular watch. Yeah. And it's a great size. And the band is lovely. It has the grains of rice and um, just a really smart looking watch. Sometimes I wish I would have gotten the all silver, but I, I, I really like the the style of the Panda. It's mm-hmm. pretty iconic. I love the Panda. I think it looks great. So, so that's also a quartz, but it's slightly different. So it's, and it's a good size, isn't it? Like 38 millimeters. It's uh, let me see here. I have the specs 38 millimeters. Uh, and not, it's not real thick. No, it's really comfortable. It's got, unfortunately, the, the lug width is 19 millimeters, so you can't really do much with it. But the, the band is really beautiful, and it comes with a, a black leather band. So you do have an an option. But uh, it works well for me. It works well for some of the guys at Red Bar who have my wrist size. They're smaller right. guys. And I don't know that you've ever tried it on, but um, I can't remember if I think you've tried it. I did when you first got it before I adjusted it for you. I mean, if you think about what watches were like in the 60s, this is actually probably bigger than what they were. Wouldn't you say? Mm. Men's watches, they were, they were, for the most part, they were were like 34 and 36. 38 would have been on the large size. Right. So it's, um, I think it's a really, really, I mean, he does really high quality stuff. All the watches I have of his, I have two now. Really the quality impressive. is commensurate with what you pay for the watch. And that's what he always says. He's like, you're not paying a lot of money, right? So you're not getting, you're not going to get Rolex quality, but you're getting a solid watch for the, it's getting, you're getting good value for your, for your dollar, you know? And he's, he's all about, Hey, if you have a problem with the watch, I'm, I'll just send you a new one. If it breaks, I'm just going to send you a new one. He's very good about that. Customer service is fantastic. Right. And I have a a little issue with my crystal on another watch. And I think they had a problem with the supplier. So they're like, oh, yeah, send it back, which I need to do now. He wanted me to wait to get it. Yeah. Well, because your first one had cracked. Mm -hmm. And And this one cracked the same exact way. Another one, it cracked the same way. So then, you know, they realized they had an issue. So they're getting some new crystals in. They're going to replace it for you. It actually cracked inside my watch box. Yeah. Now it was, I think, just from like expansion and contraction when the heat changes it, it was enough to. Right. To crack it, so but, but um, totally stands behind his pieces, which is awesome. Yeah, um, but the thing I, I like about uh, you know, some people, some collectors do not like quartz watches. They want to have high end automatics, and I I get that. But if you're if you can't afford that, which a lot of people can't, you you really get a lot. You know, you may not have the the movement and the craftsmanship and the movement or the um, the character of having an automatic movement, whatever prestige, but it, that allows the watchmaker to put a lot more into the case and a lot more into the, the finish, the fit and finish of the rest of the watch, because you're saving so much on, you know, putting a quartz movement in. Like we, um, we actually just got some Hamiltons in and we're going to do reviews on those. And I'm really impressed with, and they're both quartzes. And I think that's why we wanted to do a quartz show because I was so impressed with the quality of this watch. When you look at it, it, it's just stunning. That one, the one, um, Mm -hmm. It's a, uh, it's the Bolton, which is their classic the one that line. Paolo has. The one that um, I thought Stephen had it. Uh, I think Stephen has it. Oh, you're right. Paolo, he has an original. paolo has got the, the uh, other one that we're reviewing. What's it called? Oh, the you crazy, mean right the now? The Ventura. That's the exciting part. Is we're having our first reader reviews coming out and it's being done by a couple of our Red Bar Sacramento buddies. So yeah. So, those. so that Bolton is a a model that's been made for many, many years. And one of our red bar folks actually owns one of the original 1940s 
Yeah, this is gold, I think, right? It's gold, and it, it looks so similar. I'm, it's it's wonderful to see a watchmaker actually stick with their original styling, and they didn't mm-hmm. they didn't move too far away from uh, things. So that'll be a fun review. And just the finish of it, it's so beautiful, and it enables, you know, the quartz movement in a watch saves saves enough money so that they can put fancy things on it, like a, a nicer clasp or... Um, you know, a better, a better coating or, you know, it's just interesting. So there's a, a way to, af- you know, get more watches out to people by keeping the cost down. You still get a quality product. There's so we're not anti Nothing quartz. wrong with quartz. Yeah. That's why we're doing this show. All right. Is that it for that one? Yep. All right. So I'm going to go to my second one, which is a watch that I own. It's a watch I've talked quite a bit about on this show. And that's the Alpiner, the Alpina Alpiner X. This is the one that I did the the preview piece on for wristwatchreview.com and then Patrick did the hands-on article. Um, and they went through Kickstarter, which was a little bit odd for Alpina to go through Kickstarter, but they did it to not only get feedback from the community on features, but also to get designs that would eventually be the designs that they sold on their website or through retailers. So they pick some of the most popular designs that have been designed by the community because we got to design our own watch in terms of colors and and that kind of stuff. And now they offer them and I, they're about 995 bucks. They're almost a thousand bucks, but it's a really cool smartwatch for lack of a better term. I guess that's what it is. I don't use any of the smart features on mine. Like I don't use the sleep tracking and the activity monitor and the step counter and the message indicators and all that junk. What I do like is the altimeter. I use that all the time when we're when we're up like riding snowmobiles and in uh, Tahoe. I'm always looking at our altitude. It's got a temperature temp sensor. Uh, it's got a compass, which is really cool. A UV indicator, which I think it's the I want to say it's the first watch ever with a UV indicator. Um, and then it also has the barometer, a barometer, and ties into the GPS on your phone. So. There's an app that you put on your phone and it'll track your path that you walk and via GPS and your distance and all that stuff. So I think we, didn't you just do this on your, in the collection last podcast? Yeah, this was one that I did in the collection. So I've, I've talked about it a ton on the podcast, but if you're looking for a cool quartz regulated watch, and again, this is a smart watch, so it's, it's not different exactly, than most it's, smart watches, it's different, but it's, it's an electronic watch, right? It's not a mechanical watch and it has some really fun, cool features. It's big. It's a 45 millimeter watch. Really it's not thick. for the ladies. Although you could, we did talk about that. You could, we did, you yeah. could wear it. Yeah. It, it's an outdoors if you're hiking, and... hiking, mountain climbing, whatever. It's an outdoor, you know, type watch. So very cool. Yeah. So that's my, that's my second one. Cool. My third that I've talked about before, and I have a good friend who also has it, uh, is the Seiko, it's not in production anymore, it's a Seiko Sportura Classic Ceramic Chronograph Watch. So it's stainless steel with um, ceramic bezel. It's got ceramic uh, center links inside the band. And it's a one, two, it's a five link band, I believe, unless those are connected. I can't really tell, are those connected? They might have just an outer. Um, yeah, maybe. Not sure. And then it's got a mother of pearl dial, and it's actually got some real diamonds on the indices. It's a really pretty piece. Um, it's not an eco drive, but it um, it wears really nicely. It's very very pretty, and it, it kind of reminded me of that. Is it the Astron that I was looking at for a while, but just didn't want to spend that much money? Yeah, the Astron is their kind of high end. GPS enabled Got it. solar powered watch. And it was white and gray. And mm-hmm. I kind of was looking for, I really liked the tags for a while, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to buy a quartz watch that was that expensive. And their, right. their watches were like two, $3,000. And I figured, um, this one now, um, 300 on Amazon. I think you can get it for less every once in a while. It just depends. But, um, is that they, the one did Lorraine buy that? Yes. Watch? My good friend Lorraine bought it. Hello, Lorraine. And it's SND X95 Sportura. And I've had a lot of compliments on it on the internet. And I haven't I haven't uh, posted it for a while. But it's a really, really nice watch. And they also make one very similar. Uh, Citizen makes one that's similar. And it's an eco drive. It's um, got a slightly different bezel 
and we looked at, at that as well. And that's, that costs a little more. Mm-hmm. It's newer and has the eco drive, but right. um, this is a little older and it's really pretty. It's very feminine and <clears throat> excuse me, but um, that this is a standard quartz and the case diameter is just over 38 millimeters and it's, it's pretty, it's pretty thin for a large watch. Yeah. So being quartz gets you that, um, an advantage of that is that you're not wearing quite as thick of a, right. of a watch to accommodate a large movement and the bandwidth is 18 millimeters. So that's, that's pretty standard for replacement band. If you want to do a replacement, is that 18 band. or 20, 18. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I can't think of anything else. Um, made in Japan, Seiko. It's a great looking watch. I love it that bracelet. It's very pretty. The ceramic center links with the stainless steel outer links. This is a great looking and watch. And the mother of pearl dial. Take a yeah. look at that. Yep. It's very a really, I, it's one of my favorites in your kind of more affordable collection. Thank you. So It is a little delicate though. So I used to wear this more often until I kind of learned from our friend, the no BS watchmaker that how very fragile mother of pearl is mm-hmm. and it's got ceramic. So I'm pretty careful with, with this as well as my Speedmaster that has a very similar look. So before I got the Speedmaster, I got this and, um, partially because I just loved it and I loved the tags, but I kind of wanted to, um, you know, go the ceramic route before I splurged on a, right. you know, something that I may not like. Cause you know, you don't want to be trying to sell watches. That's kind of it's not, a pain. It's kind of selling not fun. watches is a huge pain. It's kind of not fun. Uh, which, which actually reminds me of something I wanted to cover. Almost done. When we first started, okay, yeah. When you finish, but, so anyway, but this is a much sportier um, look than the Speedmaster. Anyway, it's got the chronograph, but just the whole way it's set up is um, it's it's a different look. But some some traits are the same. But right. I love it. It's really pretty. Yeah, it's cool. I dig it. Very pretty. And darling, what were you going to say? Well, I had totally forgotten to cover this and I wanted to say, say it before I forgot because it's, it's in my mind. So first off, normally we are not about helping people sell watches. Um, but we got kind of an interesting bit of information today from our good buddy over at our local Rolex AD. And he has a customer who is getting up there in age and starting to get you know, into that, I guess, dementia or I don't know, but he's, oh, like an he's early got this Hall beautiful Sanders, original yeah. 1970 Rolex Submariner red dial, which has the Submariner text in red and it's, it's a meters first dial. So it's got, it's listed as the meters first and then, then the feet and, uh, he's selling it. And so I, I told Randy, we'd, you know, give it a quick mention on the podcast. They're not inexpensive watches. So this is a very rare bird. They're, they're pretty rare. Um, you know, think 20 to Mm -hmm. $25,000 range is what these are going for. So, uh, didn't you say it's an impeccable shape? It's beautiful. I mean, I'm, if we had the money, I'd be all over it just because they're so historic. They're, they, you know, it's nice thin lugs. I mean, they're just gorgeous, but that's not the kind of money you spend on something that you're not hunting for specifically. Um, that's like buying a car. But anyway, if any of you out there are are listening and and that's a watch you've been thinking about, right. uh, this is a rare, rare. Let vintage. us know. Yeah, ping us on on Instagram. I also put it in our storyline on Instagram. You can. Um, do you want to go take her out? Life finishes. Oh, she, she can wait a couple minutes. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> the secretary needs to do something. I but, think she's uh, begging for food. <laughs> or e- email us at admin at levenwatches dot com. Use the contact yeah, form on the somebody, website. You can... If you if you know, spread the word. If you know someone. Um, you know, he bought it originally and he just wants to sell it before he loses it basically. And oh, it's so sad. It, it is, it is a really heart wrenching story to, it is, but it's cool but, at the but, same but time. But right? he wants to do it now and hopefully mm-hmm. he'll use that money to do something really fantastic for himself. And exactly, okay. exactly. All right, let's do a quick pause and okay. take the secretary out. We are back from the bio break. <laughs> <laughs> is that is that politically correct? It's use the bio for work? break. So does that mean food too? Yeah, I had a quick little snack, but so we, I've been talking about the Submariner. So again, just if anyone's interested, reach out to us. We'll get you in touch with the right people. 
it really is a, an incredible piece. So if, and if it's something that you're in the market for and... It's a f- really nice specimen, and, and we don't want anybody taking advantage of this guy because he's at a critical point in his life where he deserves to be happy. And Well, and that's the thing is, uh, is you know, our AD normally is not, they're not normally in the... in the Used watch business. No, they're not. Mm-hmm. But, you know, they, they really feel for this guy. They want to help him get the value out of the watch that he should get out of it, right? Instead of selling it to a, another retailer for way below... Right, value. and then they'll price it for over what it's really worth. Mm-hmm. So, so, so that yeah. So anyway, I just want to thank be, you. I wanted to just mention yeah. that. Well, plus, and you're willing to help out in any way you can for free, and just do yeah. it as a courtesy. Yep. To help out a friend, so I we think that's w- really wanna, nice. And I, I always like to see watches like that go to good people. Go to good people, yeah. get in the right hands, not to flippers. So, I mean, it's almost a museum piece. Yeah, but I totally would wear that thing. I mean, it's just so okay. cool. Do you Sorry, need to I'm, finish I have hiccups. <laughs> Sorry, folks. It's like I never get hiccups, and we're recording the show, and I've got <sighs> hiccups, people. Uh, I'm going to let you do another one okay. or two because I really only have one other. I will. Okay. I will mention any Solar watch is a great quartz watch. So Seiko Solar Citizen Eco Drive. Mm-hmm. I mean. You're going to pay a little bit more for a solar-powered watch, but you don't ever have to worry about changing a battery. So if you're not into doing that, if you don't, if it's a hassle to have to take it to your local watchmaker or, you know, Walgreens or whatever to change out a battery, you don't have to worry about that with the solars. And they can you, sit in your case for months. You do need some light on them. You do, but they can sit, they can literally sit and hold a charge for six, eight, sometimes twelve months. They usually have power indicators, so as mm-hmm. they get lower, you can just stick it on. We, we just stick ours on the windowsill mm-hmm. or wear it for the day, right? I mean, yep. that's what they're for. So You do have to change the transistor out or the the rechargeable battery in it, correct, right? The At some point, you probably do, a but lifetime they've thing. been known to last for, I mean, I don't know how long they've been making solar pieces, probably 20 years, and they've been known to last that long. So it just depends. I mean, you may have one that in 10 years, need, you got to swap out the capacitor. You know, but maybe the, not ever, because I heard they have to send it back ever. to Seiko to do it. Yeah. That's what the jeweler said. But, but anyway, it's a fantastic, especially for a new watch collector or someone who's got a busy lifestyle mm-hmm. or a very young person just graduating from high school. You know, they're going off to do, you know, great things in the world and they don't want to be hassled with maintaining, you know, doing maintenance on automatic watches or, yep. you know, there, there's a thing for everybody. To me, they're the ultimate grab and go. You know, that's the term that Mike and Cass like to use a lot. The, the ultimate grab and go quartz, mm-hmm. right? Because you don't ever have to worry about a battery. You don't have to pull the crown out to save the battery. You just leave it ticking. Make sure it gets some, some light every once in a while. And it's, a, it's like a no maintenance watch. Yep. And unless you have to change the date mm-hmm. to catch up with your days yeah. of the month, but I think it's like the perfect busy person's watch or someone, some people just don't get it. They don't get watches. They don't understand the concept. They don't understand the technology. Perfect watch for them. So they can wear this fantastic watch Mm -hmm. and they don't have to do anything. Yep. And especially if it's a chronograph, because you know, a chronograph watch, I speaking of chronograph um, and, and Rolexes, (laughs) I actually, this morning was wearing my Invicta Speedway and it's the, it's the Daytona homage. It's the watch we gave away. That was our first it, ever is, giveaway watch. Yes, I had watch. two of them. Of I had two of them and we gave one away to our friend in England. And it's a great looking watch. And it's got screw down pushers and screw down crown. So I'm assuming it's waterproof. I've been wearing it in the water and no problem. But if it's it was, still working, it's waterproof. It's still working. <laughs> probably says on yep. the case back, it's probably 50 meters or 100 meters. But if you, if you end up a uh, 20 ATM... 20, is it really? So it's yeah. 200, 200 meters. Or, oh, it's screw down pushers, ATM, right? Screw down yeah, pushers. Yeah, screw down pushers. That makes but, sense. Um, oh, the sun just came out. Wow. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so with a non-eco drive, like a non-solar watch, if you use the chronograph a lot, like my Seiko that I just talked about, the Sportura, I've already had to change the battery in that. Although yeah. it may have been sitting on a warehouse shelf somewhere, but um, you're going to get a lot more life out of your chronograph if it's the solar. Totally. So it's yeah. a really neat. So that that was that's what I was wearing in the morning, and then switched to that Casio later. But my next watch on my mm-hmm. list is my Citizen Eco Drive that uh, you purchased for me. Uh, did you get it like fifty percent off at the mall? 
they were clearing them out. 40% off, I think. Yeah. Well, I had, that's the watch. I think we've told this story before, but I was, you know, in my car driving to a customer appointment and I was late that morning. So I was rushing to get out of the house and I didn't put a watch on. I was freaking out. <laughs> I mean, I was coming apart the seams. I, I did not have a watch on my wrist. There was, it was. I think you texted like me. Like the world was off its access. I mean, it just wasn't yeah. making sense to me. I think you um, texted me and you're like, I forgot a watch. Oh my gosh, what do yeah. I do? And I had, I was, so I had been running late. So I went to my customer meeting and then immediately after that customer meeting, and of course in the meeting, I'm fidgeting the whole time. I'm like, oh God, I don't have a watch on. Rubbing I'm, your I'm wrist. Like so self-conscious, right? You should have just taken a Sharpie and drawn a watch on your <laughs> I was I was pretty close. <laughs> uh, so right after that meeting, I hightailed it over to the mall. And went to some jewelry store and found these citizens at 40 off. And so I got one for me and one for you. And Which one do you name. have? Is it like a sporty blue It's thing? a large black, um, kind of a Flieger style, really large case. Um, so kind of Flieger style, but it's a chronograph. All black. When I start talking about this one, why don't you grab it out of the box? Because I want to see it. Okay, I can grab All it. All right. So he'll be right back. But I'm going to continue babbling on here. But oh. So my citizen that was purchased is a men's... Eco Drive. It's the AW7039-01H, as in hotel. It's uh, It's got a brown dial. Um, it's got the 12369 indices, except at three, it's got the date. And the case size is pretty big. It's almost 42 millimeters, but it's got a really nice leather NATO, two-piece NATO. And it looks really nice on it. It's actually a really flattering watch for the ladies. And I've put scarves through it as bands. And I have um, I was trying to find a, a metal bracelet for it, but the one I bought was so big, it didn't. Ha- I couldn't take enough links out. So that was a men's only bracelet. So I, I pretty much just keep it on the, um, the stock leather NATO. It's a really nice color. It's got the brush stainless. And then the, the bezel insert is actually... I think that's a little bit more. Is that a little more highly polished than the case? The bezel mm-hmm. insert. It looks a little bit lighter. It's almost like a. a it's a lighter light, grayish. A light or? gray, yeah. So it stands out a little bit. It just slightly stands out and looks. I, I love the look of this watch. It is yeah, a really and, sharp looking watch. And the band or the 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 dial has a, like a vertical striping on it. You can you can see it in real life, but you can really see it on the Amazon ad. The picture they took is pretty good, but. The the uh, indicator, the second hand, and the power reserve indicator really pops with the orange. And this thing really glows at night. Their loom is fantastic. So that is, you know, not an analog quartz. This is an eco drive quartz. So I do have to put it out in the sun because right. if, I, if I don't get the sun on it, it gets bad. So I don't know if it's because the age of the watch. It's a pretty old watch. It's not made anymore. But there are still some, let's see, available from these sellers. I've seen them on eBay for like a couple hundred bucks or hundred. Oh, here, 124 with free shipping. So if you guys want one, they're really, really affordable. And I think you may have paid about that for it, maybe 150 back in the day. Yeah, when they were clearing I think it, it out. was right around 150 bucks. It was a bucks. clearance. So there's a lot, there's still a lot of stock left, but I don't believe it's actually being made, but it's actually a really pretty watch and... I'm getting um, reacquainted with all my quartz watches by looking at them thinking, oh, I missed this. And I'll tell you, Citizen, I'm liking that brand more and more. You, you didn't know, we, like the $7,000 one, though. No, I didn't. But they came out with their that ProMaster Suno chronograph. So our local jeweler now mm-hmm. sells chronograph and or sells uh, Citizen. Citizen. And they've have they got this Suno chronograph in there. And it is it is a sharp oh, looking watch. Do you have watch. a picture it's of it like, to show me? They're like 600 bucks between six and 700. Oh, those are they're, nice. They're that good first one is watches. beautiful with the black bezel and the white dial. Yeah, they're reissues. They came out last year and they're reissues of watches that Citizen had done several years ago. Um, but back to this one. Oh, so th- yeah. The one that I bought for myself, which I actually have on a Toxic NATO's gray bond black bond right now um the one i bought for myself is called the avion avion um it's an eco drive again quartz with a date um 236 retail 
And the one I they they make a stainless steel case, which is this one. Then there's also a black PVD case. This one is the CA forty two ten dash twenty four E. And like I said, it's kind of like a B dial. It's like a B dial chronograph or a, a, what do you call it? Um, Flieger, mm-hmm. where it's got the triangle at the, the top, the sixty second indicator, yep. you know, track on the outside, then the one to twelve on the inside. I never noticed that. That's really neat. Mm-hmm. Nice watch, yeah, huh? It's fun. It's big. It's a big, big watch. Very big. What's the diameter of the case? I'm looking for. It's a 45. Whoa. Yeah. So it's it's a big sucker. It's got a pretty case back. It's got the world, the globe on it, and mm-hmm. it says Citizen Eco Drive. When did they start doing the Eco Drives? Do you remember? I you know I don't know. I, I'm not sure when they uh, when they started it. But anyway, so this one came with a like a really thick gray or thick brown leather strap. A NATO. No, just a brown regular pin Two buckle piece, yeah. strap, and I've been wearing it on that on that toxic from from Terry, and I really enjoy it. I like the lugs on this. Twenty two, I think. The uh, the angled, mm-hmm. it's like billet. It looks like billet steel. It's really pretty. It's a good looking watch. It's just big. It's going to be hard for a lot of people to to pull off. Even on my seven and a half inch wrist, it's pretty good size. It but... almost looks like it's a little sandwichy. Like the sub dials are set down low. I don't think um, it is. I think there's just. I think it's just. Does the it look like window, the sub dials are low? They're sunken, like a sunken living room kind of thing. Oh, they are. Yeah. So it is um, multi level. So the sub. It's pretty. The uh, the twenty four hour indicator sub dial on the right, and then the nine o'clock sixty sixty minute indicator for the chronograph is. Uh, those are both inset, and then the the sub dial at um, six o'clock is running seconds. But it, it's really it's, it's a cool nice watch. looking watch. I, I don't wear Very it as masculine. often as I probably should. I, we, our collection is ridiculously large. We have too many watches, but but most of but them are really a, affordable. A, yeah, yeah, it's a fun one. We have a ton of affordable watches, and this is one of them. And it's I'm going to put it on right now. Good. That's a topic we've talked about too. Is some people have five watches, and they're all fantastic, high end, you know, Omega, Rolex, whatever. And then some people have lots and lots of. You know, it just depends on what you want to do. Do you want to collect styles or have more options. Very nice. And he just put it on. It looks really good. Yeah, that's Very fun. masculine. Cute. Yep, it's fun. Masculine, but cute. There you go, yep, guys. It's yep. very masculine, masculine but apparently cute. it's cute. Should um, I do my last one? Do your last one, then I'll okay. close with mine. My last one. Let me put my little thing on my iPad. You didn't do that one, so that's not your last well, one. Well, this one isn't technically... Well, I have one other it's that I was going quartz, to do. It's not but you got to okay. talk about it. All right, it. so I'll talk, I'll talk about these two. So Perfect. First one... Um, we're doing sign language here, which you can't see. Uh, first one is, and this is, I think I posted this yesterday. It's Timex Quartz Digital. And it's the Timex 80. It's a, I believe it's a reissue. Is it a reissue? Or is it a vintage styling? It's the vintage, it's the vintage 80s styling. Correct. So this is a stainless steel collection. color. Mm-hmm. It's got a band very, very similar to the new Q. It has the like seven mm-hmm. or nine, one, two, three, four, five, seven. So it's uh, it's hot pink. It's like pink, pink, super pink. Very pink with a it's green a display. Green display. And it has Indiglo, which I love. That's so great at night. And the, the numbers are very large. It's like an easy reader. Yeah. It's the classic digital Timex digital watch, mm-hmm. you know, or Casio or whatever. Um, very classic looking. So it's the Timex 80 is the style. Uh, it says water. Let me give you the water. If you rating. can't read the the reference number, we can find it. That's not yeah. a big deal. It even gives you the it even gives you the battery size on the back. Okay, water resistant, thirty meters. So okay. I would say splashing, doing dishes, filling goose water buckets, um, whatever my friends do who wear watches. It's probably safe. I don't know that I'd swim in it though. Would you swim in that? Probably, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. It's probably no different than the Casios. Well, and you only you spent 20 bucks on it, so... Um, well, they, it's various prices. It just depends on who's buying it. So it ranges from 50 to 80 So okay. this is a... A little, little more than $20. Yeah. So um, this one comes in multiple colors. It comes in orange with a gold tone band, which is fabulous. Mm-hmm. And it also comes in pink, and I believe it comes in red. That one's really sharp. So it's the 80... Timex 80 TW2P65000. 
stainless steel pink digital water resistant 30 millimeter 30 meter quartz women's watch and let's see made in usa it says made in usa on here so there you go and i do believe cool. there's several colors i think there's an all um there's an orange one. Oh, there's also this silver one here darling yep. that's a good with looking the, one with the black yeah. oops black bezel. Like yeah so it's got a slightly different band but that one's got um a black face insert and i think there's also more um there's a lot of nice watches on amazon that you can get okay so that's that one and i thought it was really interesting that the time XQ is going for so much money when this is a very similar watch and it's retro and yes, it's not the same style, but why did, why didn't this one get a lot of attention? Is it because guys love Pepsi dial? You know, Pepsi I, bezel. I, yeah. I don't know. And I, women aren't really collectors. Pepsi is a big thing. It's common among other brands though. It's not well, just one brand. It's kind of a, it's like saying Kleenex, right? And, and Rolex, you know, released their stainless steel Pepsi last year and then Jubilee this year. So there's... It's the time for it. This year. So it's in everyone's minds. There's a lot of people that covet that watch. And so they see, a, you know, a Pepsi bezel. But the thing is, there's all kinds of Pepsi bezels. I mean, last week, right before the Q Timex was, was announced, Glycine did a partnership with, it's called Drop now, but Mass Drop to do a, a, a version of shoot. I'm going to forget the, the name of the model. Um, but it's just a good solid glycine three. I think it's a three hander. I don't think it's a GMT. I really should be looking at this, but beautiful Pepsi bezel. We don't claim to it's know everything. awesome. <laughs> and it was 400 bucks. So a hundred less than what the scalper was asking for the Q Timex on eBay. And was it an automatic or a course? Yes, oh, an automatic. so I mean, man, that's tough to beat, right? That's really tough to beat. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I mean, because more money goes into making an automatic. It's not that it's better. It's just different, it's and it's more expensive correct. to to manufacture. So yeah, but anyway, that's you know the Pepsi bezels are popular. Hot. But I mean, yeah. Timex has got their their Allied Three GMT, which is a Batman bezel. And they've had that for a while, I think, and it's that didn't get the crazy reception because they didn't market it the way they marketed the Q Timex. Because so. of the buildup. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So upon more looking, back to my task here, this one also comes in orange with a gold. It comes in another stainless with a black. It comes in a blue with a gold case and a denim band. Look how look how cute that is. This is called their unisex. Oh, that's cool. Isn't that pretty? Yeah, that's cool. It's really cute. That is super cute. I'd, I'd that would be that. that would be Christmas gifts for everybody. And I've tried mm -hmm. to do that some years and Amazon won't let me buy more than a certain amount of time because they yeah. think I'm going to scalp them. <laughs> scalp, 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 scalp. a $50 watch. It also comes in um, this kind of orangey mango jelly. See that? That's kind of cool. I don't know if I'd wear it, but oh, you, you guys could totally wear it. that. You just yeah, have maybe. to be a little more of a modern guy. You know, you can't you can't be a cowboy I'm and wear definitely that. Definitely not a modern guy. So no, you're a cowboy. I, I can't pull okay. off that kind of stuff. So, and I I have seen it also in a red dial, but um, I don't want to get too much into too much of that. So, um, and then now my last one, which I I pulled out and then was thinking about it, and I'm like, oh, I don't think this is a quartz. So mm -hmm. what it is, is this is actually yours because you're... There's a backstory to that yeah, too. Yeah, your father had a transistorized... Stellaris. Watch. Yep. Very similar to this. And mm -hmm. your sister has it. Yep. And... And I serviced it for her, put a... YouTube video out. Yeah. And I was... I opened it to put a... I think to put a battery in it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, there's a balance wheel in here. I'd never seen it before. So I actually did a YouTube video on it. That's one of our first YouTube videos. And this is the Stellaris and it's got a gold case and a, this is kind of an aftermarket, um, Spidel. I wonder what was originally on here. That might be the original bracelet. Yeah, that might be. I'd have to do some looking. 
I don't know, but it's and it says transistorized. It's on transistorized. It. So I do not, I do not believe that there's a quartz crystal in this. There is not. So prior to quartz kind of becoming the leading electric version of of the wristwatch, there were other other efforts to make electronic watches. Things like the Bulova Accutron, right? With the oh, tuning yes. Fork. Very famous. Yeah. Um, this one is called a transistorized watch. And basically, you still have a balance wheel. But instead of a mainspring that and goes rotor. through you know, the escape wheel and the pallet fork and everything, the balance wheel has electric contacts on it. And it's the back and forth oscillating is powered by a transistor that you know switches on and off and provides power and takes power away from that. Battery. And that oscillating, yeah, and the transistor is powered by a battery, so it's battery powered, but it still has an oscillator, right? It still has a balance wheel to keep time, right. which is kind of cool. So it's basically an automatic without a rotor and mainspring. And mainspring, yeah, yeah. It's it's, it's fascinating. Neat. It's very fascinating technology. It's not a technically, it's not a quartz watch, but it is an electronic were, watch. So. Yeah. So the transistor replaces the quartz crystal. No, the quartz crystal replaces the the whole escapement, so the balance wheel. Oh, all that for stuff. the timing. For this the still has for the, the movement. Yeah, the timekeeping function or the the um, the regulating device is still a balance wheel. It's just you get you get rid of the the escapement, so no escape wheel, no you know no mainspring that powers all the springs that that and come gears. down to the the pallet fork. It's just a battery that powers a transistor that that switches on and off. Right. So like you kind of have to kickstart these things. And once they're kickstarted, then it's just it's switching on and off and powering that oscillating wheel. And it's it's neat. It's very cool technology. I'm, I'm glad you included that one, even though it's not technically a quartz. They're fun. And mm -hmm. I think I spent 50 bucks for it. And it's it's, it's in not, beautiful uh, condition. It's not running. It's in beautiful condition. I think it needs a battery. It might need a battery. Yeah. Sometimes it just needs to be kickstarted. There it goes. Oh, see, I just like Fonzie just, hitting the shake it, jukebox, right? Because right? you got to get that balance wheel going, and then once it, oh my its gosh. contact points hit the contact points powered by the by the transistor, then it starts cranking. Is that true, or are we yeah. are we just guessing? No, that's how it works. Oh my gosh! Yeah, it's yeah, really so it's, it's running neat now. technology. What's the date? Is yeah. it date right? Twenty third. Yeah, look at that. It's even on the right day, and it's got. I think you set the date by pushing the button. That's how. Yes. Yeah, like the yeah. kind of like, like the, the pogue. The and the Seiko Belmatic mm -hmm. as well. Yep. Yep. But yeah, fun, fun pieces. It's, I was really happy to pick that one up and it's got kind of like the Q Timex, right? Something else everyone's going gaga over on the Q Timex is you don't have to take off the whole case back to replace right. the it's battery. Right. It's got a, like a it's swatch got, little yep, access. It's got a little access hatch that you use a quarter to unscrew it and mm -hmm. then you pop a new battery. And so it's like the battery compartment hatch. So yeah, just. Very nice. And beautiful blue dial. This thing's in incredible shape. And it's, I mean, got, it's gold with blue. It's pretty. Yeah. Like I said, I think I paid 50 for it. And now we've seen them for up to $200 in good working condition in this mm -hmm. shape. Because this thing is like perfect. It's no scratches. Just it was really well taken care of. There's a couple on eBay right now that are silver, I think. They're kind of, you know, like just really plain. Mm -hmm. I think that's the original crystal too. Look how thick that I, is. I would I'd imagine, yeah. yeah. It's pretty. And it's got a little yep. loom on it. I don't know how good it is, but um, it's pretty to watch. I like yeah, it. Yeah, it's fun. So anyone could wear that. Totally. It's total cushion case, cushion cut. So that's yep. that's all I've got. I've got some more quartz watches, but I just picked those because some are a little different than others. And I think it, it's a good... I think definitely a really variety. Good, good variety. All right, should I do my last one? Yeah. So this one we've... Then we got to go do some chores. We've talked a ton about this one. Um, I own it. It's not on the affordable side, unfortunately. Um, and that's my Grand Seiko. And a lot of you are going to say, nah, that's not really quartz. Well, but then a lot of people say, well, it's not really mechanical either. It's both, right? It's, it's a mechanical movement minus... Um, Minus the escapement, basically, All right? So it's got a, it uses magnet technology and it's, I Spring forget drive. the name of what the escapement is called, but the wheel basically just turns smoothly. It doesn't oscillate, right? And then it uses a magnetic brake to slow down the, the, uh, 
the seconds hand, still uses the quartz to regulate the time, right? And then passes that information to a magnet that, that speeds up or slows down the seconds hand and uh, still has a mainspring, right? So there's an automatic. There's a rotor. It's a rotor that winds a mainspring, powers a whole gear train, but it's regulated by a quartz. So it's not powered by battery. So it's not your traditional quartz watch. It's a, I think it takes the best of both worlds and merges them. And that's why I love the, the sort of like so the much. Stellaris uses the opposite. Kind of. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So, so that's my, my last pick. The specific one I have, it's the, the SBGA 387, which is the one that we got to see last year at Couture. Mm-hmm. We were the first, we saw the, the prototype first to see it. We saw the prototype. They had the platinum and the gold. It was the first day they had it's, let the press in, right? Mm-hmm. Or anybody. And it's the first... What's significant was these three watches were the first that were U.S. exclusive releases from Grand Seiko. Because traditionally, the exclusive releases were over in Japan. Grand Seiko is a standalone entity now here in this country. And so this was kind of their... Their ribbon-cutting release where these three watches. And the stainless is just gorgeous with this blue dial. I think they made like around 550 of them or something, maybe a little more. Well, the other two were really fancy. They were the platinum, the platinum and the gold. Like, and the, the platinum ro- like was like fifty grand or something gold crazy. Or, was it rose gold? And rose gold. No, it was or yellow gold. It was yellow gold. I think. I'm pretty sure it was yellow gold. One of them they made like ten, and the other one they made like twenty, twenty or thirty. And, and then this one they made five hundred and fifty yeah. something of them. But I mean, as soon as we got home, I called Rob over at um, at Topper Jewelers, <laughs> and I'm like, "Hey, I got to get him a list for this thing. I just love it." And, you know, I talk a lot about limited editions and how I don't like it. I still am not a big fan of limited editions, but I didn't buy this. To, I don't buy watches to flip them. I absolutely fell head over heels for this watch. I didn't have a spring drive in the collection yet, and it was something I wanted to add. I'd been looking at the Snowflake for a long time, and uh, which is the, I think it's the previous S- SBG 211, I think. I don't know. I'm not great with reference numbers. Anyway, I don't know if there's any of these left. There might be a handful still out there. I don't know. Um, if you're in the market for a Grand Seiko and you've been looking at the Snowflake, it might be worth checking this out. It's more expensive than the Snowflake, but boy, it's the blue, this blue dial, they call it Kirazuri, mm-hmm. which I'm, I'm looking, I had just found it's something a, that talked about what it, yeah. what it, what that meant. It translates to sparkling painting. So it's a painting technique, a mm-hmm. Japanese painting technique. And so that's what the the dial is is modeled after. And just a beautiful watch. I mean, date at three o'clock. It's got the traditional spring drive, uh, you know, power reserve indicator between seven and eight. And just just a beautiful piece. I mean, the craftsmanship's amazing. All the polishing. The indices. I love it. It's a fantastic nice. watch. I, I do wear it quite a bit. It's too big one. for me. It's too big for me. Mm, I, you know, it's a 40 millimeter and it doesn't, it, have, big. it doesn't have wide lugs. To me, it kind of sits on your wrist like the bluesy did. Very, very similar case sizes. Yeah. It's a different style though. The lugs are a little bit longer than the bluesy. Mm-hmm. They're a little bit more angular. So maybe that makes it feel a little larger, but I still think it works fine on your wrist. I mean, I think the Submariner works fine on your wrist with the maxi case and that's, that's good size. That's definitely bigger than this guy. But um, yeah, so that's it. That's our it favorite quartz pieces. At least our favorites right now. At least our favorites right <laughs> now. And who knows, maybe we'll do another quartz episode. Another favorite quartz watches episode. I don't know. We've talked about but quartzes before. We have. And we kind of, we, um, we said some negative, we have said negative things about quartz watches before, but that's all That was only when they overpriced The fashion something. brands that yeah. take a men's watch and stick a mechanical movement, throw a bunch of diamonds on it and charge 20 grand for it. We don't, we don't we're not big fans of that, but. Although the diamonds may be worth against that, quartz it's hard technology. to say. We love quartz. I think it's when they overestimate what they think it's worth because of the name. Mm-hmm. Could totally. Be. Yeah. Yep. But all right. So just to, to quickly recap. Uh, we talked about the Q Timex and how crazy that is. And please, please, please don't go and line some scalpers pockets with, 
you know, two or three hundred percent above retail when these things are not limited. So if you if you want one, just hang tight. There will be more. Kind of like that. Don't don't sweat it. Just like the blue al- um, alpinist. I'm well, hoping they're Well, the blue alpinist gonna... was limited. So that's oh, a whole it was. Different story. Are you sure? Positive. Oh. Yeah, that was definitely. But the limited. the cocktail times were too, and they came out with the presage, so that they could yep. sell those to people who liked them. Yeah. Hopefully they'll do that. But yeah, in, in this case, it's not limited. It's going to be in retailers. Don't spend your money like that. It's just crazy if you do. Totally crazy if you go spend 500 bucks uh, for that watch because it's not limited. It's it's a, just a basic quartz watch with a red and blue bezel on it. So um, talked about the Omega, the full moon, the Omega Speedmaster full moon, um, which will be interesting to see how many of those they sell. And it's pretty expensive too. I think it's around 10 grand. So it's because it's got the gold, all the gold indices Ooh. and... Yeah, it's not a cheap watch. Right? That's a, that's a pretty high price for not a lot of gold. Well, and I think a lot of that is just in the 50th anniversary, you know, stigma of the watch. So that's probably where a lot of that price comes from. Uh, so yeah, not not one that we'll be getting. I'm it's decent looking, but yeah, I don't need to be looking at Buzz Buzz Aldrin's rear end when I look down at my watch. So I imagine he's not excited about that either. I don't know. I don't. I mean, I'm sure he had to sign off on it, right? It's an image of him, but I don't know. Maybe Omega owns all the rights to all the astronauts. I don't know, but yeah, Buzz, if you're out there, I'm sure you listen to our podcast. Really <laughs> sorry that your rear end is on this watch, man. Oh. They could have come out with a better, but he's an amazing a better astronaut, image, but he is a really cool guy. Like Buzz Aldrin's a neat guy. So talked about that, talked about the Submariner that, um, is for sale. The rare meters first, Red Dial Submariner. So if, if you're in the market, let us know. I think that's it. Yeah. We talked about different it. types of quartzes. We talked about mecha quartz, analog, uh, eco drive, spring digital, drive, spring drive, even transistor eyes, even which a is non not quartz. Yeah. As far so, as we know, it's not. That was fun. We covered a lot of different things. Mm-hmm. Uh, thank you to everyone who has uh, given us a, a little review on oh, iTunes. Yeah, those really are fun. appreciate it because those are finally starting to come in. Uh, we were reading through some of those today and, and really, really appreciate the nice, the kind words. And, you know, it, it seems that people are really enjoying the show and that makes us feel great and makes us want to keep doing it. So if you haven't given us a review, written a review for us, please take the time, uh, especially if you listen on iTunes. Uh, m- remember, all the podcasts are released on the website. You can listen to them on the website. You can comment there on the post on the website. You can comment on the Instagram post when we post the post the shows there but yeah just keep the feedback coming guys we we love it and it helps us uh helps us stay motivated and it helps us come up with new topics and you know we're we're enjoying it and like we said last week we are we're determined to get back to a weekly show so um we're we're a little over a week but we're still within the week so i think that's i think it counts we're not begging for topics and we're not out of ideas we just are trying to tailor it to what people want to hear. Yeah, we have a topic list we could that's talk pretty forever. extensive. Yeah. But if there are specific things you guys want to hear about that you haven't heard about on other shows, that's what we want. That's the information we want from you. Well, that's something we, we haven't thought about. You it's know? funny because I reached over 1,700 followers on my personal account, mm-hmm. but our Love & Watches account only has 600 or... No, we're in the eights, I think. And I'm just wondering, because all my growth is organic. It's all watch people. I have. But here's the thing. I don't put a lot of stock in Instagram followers. Where I go to look is our stats on SoundCloud. And just so you all know, of of the 26 episodes, not counting this episode, of the 26 that had been released previously, we're approaching 20,000 plays. That's a big deal for us. So across 26 episodes... That's pretty Our amazing. podcast has been played twenty thousand, almost twenty thousand times around the world. We've got listeners in every corner of the globe. That's really cool. We know a lot. We we've met a lot of you on Instagram, so that's that's cool with Instagram, right? Because mm-hmm. I chat with some of you guys in Australia and England and or UK, whatever you guys call it now, London, England, like <laughs> Austin Powers would say. Uh, but it's fun, you know. It's just it's and that makes us feel good. So that's. That's what I look at. I don't look so much at the Instagram followers because there's just too many things that you can do to cook those numbers. Mm. And we don't play those games. So we're never going to have a, a massive following on Instagram. But, um, you know, what I look at is is the plays. I look at the reviews because the more reviews that we get, and I've said this before, 
the more reviews that that the show gets, the better it does in Apple search engine. So, you know, the know, more of those that we crazy. can build up when someone searches for wristwatch and iTunes, they give you a higher is, priority, is moving huh? up the, the yeah. ladder, which is, that's great. So that's what, those are the things that I look at Instagram followers. Hey, whatever. I mean, we, we enjoy interacting with you guys on, on social media and we'll continue to do it, but there are more important metrics that I look at. So. Well, and I believe that ours is the first, official watch podcast with a female host that's the only one that i know of. we were definitely the first i think, I think there we're are still guests the only ones. i think there's females guests on some yep. watch related but i think but I, you're the I think only I'm female it. host you're it which i'm kind of surprised kind of surprised well and i didn't even yeah. try to do this this was a total accident don't listen to her guys it was completely <laughs> her idea totally her idea well, well, I think that's I think that's probably a wrap. We're actually a little short today. We're about an uh, hour and 20. So uh, <laughs> hopefully we, we lasted the entire commute, depending on how long your commute is. But uh, I know a lot of you have, have thanked us for helping helping with those commutes. And hopefully we can keep doing that. So Keep boredom away. Yeah, exactly. So, all right. Well, thanks as always for listening. We love all you guys. We appreciate all of our listeners so much. Thank you so much for listening. This is Ranch Racer. And this is Perpetual Girl. Have a great day. And we will catch you guys next week for episode 28. Later.